Okay. Welcome to our shir. Parshas Zachary Mois Kedoshim, Tavshin Pei Aleph. And although there's so much to talk about, we're going to focus on one pasuk, and it's a pasuk that we're all very, very familiar with. The pasuk tells us, "Lo sikum v'loisiteres b'nei amecha." You should not take revenge. And then, "V'yahavta l'reacha kamaycha niyashem." And it tells us the beautiful words, "V'yahavta l'reacha kamaycha." Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And the question, of course, everyone has says is, how do you get there? How do you, how do you come to such a thing? I mean, we all know that we're very focused on ourselves. All of us have a little bit of narcissism in us. And that's the way we're created. So how do we get there? So I heard one shot very nice, that if you turn the, letter, the words around in the Pasuk, it'll help you get there. Kamaycha, reacha, ahavta. That first look at yourself, say, what do I like? What do I want? How do I want people to treat me? If I want them to treat me with respect, I want them to treat me with dignity, the reacha v'ahavta, I should do that as well. So the secret of getting v'ahavta v'ahavta kamaycha is kamaycha the reacha v'ahavta. And then I saw Kalinsky has a, has a, <laughs> a marvelous little marshal. It's, it's a mimer, it's called Goslin Befrak. A Goslin, a frak. A uh, goslin, uh, a thief, and a frock, meaning a, a, a rabbinic goslin. What does that mean? So he says there was a story, of course it's a marshal, that on Simcha's Torah, one of the uh, Amarats of the Shul was dancing with wild abandon. We all know this story. And the dying of the city comes over to him, and he says to him, uh, what are you dancing for? This is a Simcha's Torah, it's a day for Simcha for the Talmud <laughs> HaChachom. People learn the Yud a whole year, they get to dance. What are you dancing for? So the al answer that we all know is he says back to him, he says, I, my brother makes a wedding, I shouldn't dance at the wedding just because I'm not making a wedding. I remember at the Siyam Shas, we would tell people, would say, you know, years ago, now Baruch Hashem people come, but in the, in the beginning we started making Siyam Shas, and people would say, why should I come? I'm not learning Shas. And I would tell them this Moshe, and I'd say, your brother's making you simple, you finish Shas, you're not going to come? Well, P.S., a lot of those people who came to join their brother end up learning Shas themselves. But that's not the point. The point is that they, we all share in each other's Simchas. But he says a different story. He says the Amar, who was a little bit drunk and he wasn't uh, thinking too clearly, he said to him, Rebbe, you know, we just got done with uh, Simchas, with uh, Yom Kippur. And Yom Kippur, I said, Hasham nu, Bagad nu, Gazal nu, Hamas nu. He says, where did I come to Gezel? I'm a poor man, I don't have any money, I, I don't steal, I don't take from anybody. He says, but then I said to myself, you know, the Dayan, maybe he's taking some Shaykhan. Maybe the Dayan's, uh, on the, you know, taking a little something extra on the side. Maybe the Dayan is Hamas, or maybe he's taking for one giving to the other because he's his friend. So I had to do tshuva for you, Rebbe. So if I have you in mind because I love you, and you're my brother, and I have to say a shan for you, so you have to, when you, when you dance, and when you celebrate your Simchas Torah, I'm there for you as well. Just like I'm there for you when you're sinning, I'm there for you with Simcha. So he says, of course, you know, there's not something you should try at home. He says he's, he himself is going to have to probably do tshuva, the Amor, it's for, you know, that he didn't be it properly, but the, the concept is there is that really when we do things, we're doing it for each other. Everything we're doing. Remember, we just came for Pesach, and if you say all the, you know, uh, the Shem Yichuds, and you say all the B'Shem Kol Yisrael, one of the things that we say is when we do our mitzvahs, we're doing it B'Shem Kol Yisrael, we're doing it in the name of all of Klal Yisrael. Because we're all doing for each other. We're all there for each other all the time. So, when I do a mitzvah, I have to have you in mind. And when you do a mitzvah, you should have me in mind, please. And Rahman al I do an Aveira and I need to do tshuva, you need to do tshuva too. Because we're all together. And that's what really Vahafta and Racha Kamarcha does. It makes Kal Yisrael all one. And it's the basis of Kal Yisrael Arabim Zelaza or Baza. If I make Kiddush for my wife, how do I make Kiddush for my wife? <laughs> it's a, the answer is because we're Ba'arvis with each other. So if she didn't make Kiddush, my Kiddush felt. And that's what Kirv is really based upon. The entire cure, we're not, we think we're doing it for the person we're being makar, now we're doing it for ourselves too. Because if there's somebody out there doing Aveira, 
If there's something out there not serving a Kodesh Baruch the way they're supposed to, we're also shuldik. So therefore, when we say Ashamnu Bagadnu Gazalnu, we don't say Ashamti Bagadati Gazalti. We say Ashamnu because we really should be in mind, all of us, not just ourselves. Halavag, we should all be zaychet to, to come to that madrega. I was wondering, another thought. It says, Vahafta l'reacha kamaycha. Why the word reacha? Maybe, Chveiz, Vahafta l'yedidecha kamaycha. Why vahafta l'reacha? What do we use that word specifically? So, you know, I've shared with you many times the word I heard at the, at the Levaya that a person uh, has a friend, can be different madregas of friendship. There's a chaver, which comes from Lashon and Chibur, you're together. But sometimes, uh, let's say you have a chaver in school, and you leave the school, or you have a chaver in the neighborhood, or a chaver in shul. You have a chibur with that person, the chibur is the shul, the chibur is the, the, the neighbor, the chibur is the school. But when you leave, some, sometimes you never talk to him again, you never see him again. Some occasional hasna. You don't see each other. So that's a chibur, but it's a certain level. Reacha, also. A reya, Yehuda had his reya dulami, right? The reya. But also reya mahuvim. But sometimes reya mahuvim can end rachman l'slon. It can be a get. But there's a highest level, it's called yadid. A yadid comes to the words yad, yad. Two people together who never separate from each other. They're always there for each other. And that's why we call it Kodesh Baruch Hu by Shalosh when we sing Yedid Nefesh Av HaRachaman. We call it Kodesh Baruch Hu Yedid because we know that Kodesh Baruch Hu never ever gives up on Kal Yisrael. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is always there for us. We know that's how Yedid. So I was thinking that the Torah Dafka does not pick the highest level because Vahafta Yedid I would say, okay, yeah, you know, uh, of course, uh, he's my did. I'm never going to give up. Father Rachel Kamaychi is somebody who's even just a neighbor. Your next door neighbor, your Reacha. There has to be an Ava there too. That the that the Mida of Vahafta Rachel Kamaychi is so powerful and so strong, it has to extend to all of Kal Yisrael. Not just the people that you love, not just the people you like. You have to work on it as we'll see in a minute. So I saw another thought in the Navardaka uh, countries they give out uh, every week in Shul's Bitochen weekly. So he says of the tremendous insight in Parsha Shmini we talked about the Racham and the Hasidah. We talked about birds, kosher birds, trefer birds. And two of the trefer birds are called the Racham and the Hasidah. And the Kash is, Racham is a bird that has Rachmanus and others. And Hasida, Rashi says he does chesed with his friends. So Lechaira, beautiful. Rachmanes, chesed. These should be kosher birds. Why are they trade for birds? It doesn't make any sense. See, so he says the Torah is telling us he is side that chesed without limits can turn very bad. And Rachmanes can be misplaced. It has to be, Torah has to tell you what's the right chesed. Oilam chesed yibone. The Shem will tell you what's the right chesed. The Torah will tell you what's the right chesed. The Torah will tell you what's the right Rachmanus. We find that book by Shol. It says he had Rachmanus and Agog. And, uh, you know, Amalek. He had Rachmanus and the king of Amalek. And it was, it was Shreklach. You know what happened? Uh, Amalek <laughs> kept, kept, uh, kept up because of Rachmanus, misplaced Rachmanus. Chesed. It says the brother and the sister in Nebuch is Chesed who? It's Chesed, beautiful, right? It's wrong. It says Avram Avinu was the paradigm of Chesed. But what is Avram Avinu? What's the greatest thing that he's known for? Akedas Yitzchak, which was the antithesis of Chesed. So we see that Chesed is what the Kodesh Baruch Hu tells us is Chesed. And Rachman is what the Kodesh Baruch Hu tells us Rachman is. And we see how important the Midah of Ava is from the fact that we have in the Indian of Tsar Bali Chaim, which is also Tsar Bali Chaim, is Chesed. There's an interesting word in Bamba Siyah Daf Lama Beis Am Beis. says like this, the Talacha normally is, if your friend is walking by with a donkey, you have two friends walking by with a donkey, one has to load the donkey, Ti'ina, and one wants to unload the donkey, Prika. Which one do you go to first? 
Halach is very simple. You go to the one to unload. Because the donkey has tsar from the big load on its back. It's, it's can't wait to get rid of it. You're doing, you're being mekayim the mitzvah of alleviating the tsar balichayim by taking it off of that donkey. However, there's an interesting halacha. The halacha is, is that the one who's going to load is your ohev, and the one who's going to unload is your sone. You do, uh, uh, the other way. Uh, to load is, is prika, right? And to unload is your sone. So what do you do first? You do the sone. So even though normally you do prika first is more important, and here prika is by the ohe, you ignore it, and you go to the sone, and you do it for him, the te'ina, even though it doesn't come first. Why, says the Gemara? Because lochav is yitzra adif, because it's important to take your yitzahara and knock it down. And to create love, ava between you, and the Sinai. So to bring a Sinai back, you ignore Tsar Balechaim. You go against the rules of Tsar Balechaim because there's something more important. And what's that more important? Vahafta Lariacha Kamaicha. And that's what Rabbi Kiva told us that Klal Godel Batayra. This is a Klal Godel Vahafta Racha Kamaicha. It's not just a veritable. He wasn't just saying a beautiful concept, it has halachic ramifications. Because the halakh ramification is to create a relationship with the Sine, you have to go and do it even if it's Ayran Sarbal Chaim. So we see the importance of the Hafta Racha Kamaicha is so choshev, is so important that that comes first. That's first on our mind. So I just want to end with a story about the original Rebbe. There were two partners in a diamond geshef. Let's call them Reuven and Shimon. Reuven kept the store, and Shimon went out and did business. He was the diamond sailor. He used to travel around and sell diamonds. One day, Shimon walks in, and he's mamish. He's beaten up. He's got bandages on his head, blood, you know, caked blood on his face. He says, I was beaten up. Five guys got hold of me. They stole all our diamonds. So Reuven goes, Oh, you they, Shimon, we lost all our money. We're... We, what, what's going to be? Do we tremendous loss in the business? But he felt so bad for Shimon. He said, "Okay, Shimon, we'll rebuild. We'll figure it out. Don't worry." And he tried to comfort Shimon. So a couple days later, Shimon walks in, and he's holding the keys to a brand new Tesla or Lexus or whatever is the current in those days. And, he, and, and Reuven looks at him and says, Shimon, I thought you were robbed and we lost all our money. Where are we getting? He says, well, my grandmother died, I got Yerusha. He says, that's a little funny, you know. Uh, <laughs> okay, please look. A couple days later, Shimon says, uh, Reuven, change my dress, I just bought a new house. He goes, new house? Where'd you get away new house? I thought we lost all our money. And he says, uh, hey, my other grandmother died. He says, Shimon, this is, this is nuts. I don't believe you, Shimon. He, I, it, you're, you must have stolen the money. It doesn't make sense that all of a sudden you have all this money. I don't believe, I'm sorry not to believe your story. And Shimon says, what do you mean? They beat me up. You can see my bandages. I'm, I'm mamish, uh, it's a wrist and I haven't slept in days. You know, I have to go for uh, therapy, you know. Shim, Reuven says, this doesn't make sense. I, I want to take you, we're going to the Rizna Rebbe and we're going to find out what he says. What's the Allah? So they go to the Rizna Rebbe and they walk in and Ruvain says, you know, this is a, he says he had a robbery, but I see he's buying things, he's got money, and he doesn't look at all like somebody who's uh, beaten up and uh, terrified. He looks like somebody's doing great. And Shipman says, I read, <laughs> they got me, they're terrible, I don't know what to do with it. And the Rebbe takes a look and he goes, Shipman, you're a shakman, you're a liar. Give the money back. And he says, Rebbe, you don't believe me? He says, you're a liar, give the money back. And, and finally Shipman breaks down. And he gives the money back. The next day, Reuven comes to thank the Rebbe. And he says, Rebbe, there was a mifus. How did you know? But I didn't have any witnesses. How did you know Shimon stole the money? And he says, I want you to know something. When a Yid comes to me to cry, to pour out his heart, to tell me his source, I am so I can't sleep at night. I can't. The tsar of another yid is so great. It's so painful to me. I can't do anything. 
when Shimon started crying and showing me his man, I felt nothing, nothing. I knew that can't be true. Because if he really had this source, I would have felt his pain. And therefore I knew it wasn't true, and I know he was a goslin, and that's why I called him a chakra and said, give back the money. So the original Rebbe showed us the way. He showed us the way to be with another Yid. That if we have true Vahaftal Racha Kamecha, true Avas Yisrael, true Ava, we feel Mamish Kamecha. We feel their pain literally in a way that it, it hurts us. And also we feel their Simcha. And that's Mamish. That was the Madrega Arna Kayan. says when Maisha Rabbeinu got the big job to take the Yidna Klai Yisrael. Aaron Sava Samach Belibay. In his heart, he was Sameach. He really was, but he wasn't just showing it. He was B'Simcha. So the Ebers of we should all have with each other tremendous feeling of Ava, a feeling of togetherness, a feeling of Achtus, a feeling of feeling another Yid when he's having a problem, feeling another when he's having a Simcha, feeling for him both ways. And then Yitzchem, they'll feel for us. And we'll create that Kol Yisrael, our raven, that sense of how you show together. And when Kodesh Baruch Hu sees that, Mir Chen will take away all the tsaras and bring us there to the Mashiach to the kingdom. Be married, Have a good job.